down, welcome back to the Visual Guys and uh, a Visual Guy film review to a Jesus Christ, an absolutely phenomenal masterpiece, fucking literally game changing movie, and that being The Joker. So, welcome to the Visual Guys review of The Joker. Uh, don't worry if you haven't seen it, there will be no spoilers, but there will be a podcast up on Tuesday. Uh, I said Tuesday properly there. I usually say Tuesday. What the fuck happened there? But anyway, well, we're going to go heavy spoilers and stuff and break shit down. But I'm probably going to teeter on the line of spoilers here because fucking hell, this film was just crazy. And then, uh, right, the way you watch this film um, could be interpreted, and I'm being very postulate, in so many different fucking ways. And I've got the way I've interpreted stuff. But if you completely disagree, let me know in the comments below because I think so many different people could look at this film in so many different ways, but it's it's 100% game changing. The film is a, I don't want to say it's a slow burn, but don't go in just expecting fucking action, 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 action. It's a long, well-written, well-drawn out, fucking awesome story. There are some really high action spots and some really cool sequences and stuff. And if that's what you want from a film, you've got that. But this was just mainly story driven and, and that is absolutely fine when you, you, you're really trying to break down and get behind the mind of somebody that likes the joke. And now this, we've played the video games, which for me were probably the closest I've ever got into the mind of the Joker. We've had it in comic books, some comic book adaptations and, and stuff like that. But this, I left the cinema and I felt like I had experienced what it's truly like to, to, to try to try and, and think how the Joker thinks. Don't get us wrong, I ain't gonna go out and commit any crimes and do any murders or any of that shit. That stuff that people are saying in the news and that is all fucking bullshit. This, this film uh, uh, delves into the, the world of mental illness so, so, so heavily and I have not got a single word that I could chuck into breaking down mental illnesses uh, or uh, anything like that because I one, I'm not qualified and I am a fucking idiot but I'm, I'm still gonna try and talk about it as best I can uh, but yeah just just bear in mind I am no one that should try and break down any kind of mental illness and how visuals this film just this film right oh my god I said it to Chris there's one line there's one line in this film that really stuck with me and I'm probably gonna butcher it here but uh, Arthur says he says a lot of people uh, don't look at it from the other person's point of view and that is that is completely fucking true because If you watch any sort of thing to do with the Joker nine times out of ten You'll always look at it through the eyes of Batman and Bruce Wayne and then Watching this film you, you're forced to look at it from his perspective and you don't realize it's what you're doing Well, I didn't anyway. Well, well I did I'm, Fuck off you. I'm, I'm, I'm butchering this bit but when he got to that bit I'm like oh my god I, I have literally just just basically witnessed exactly how it is like for you and how you see the world and you're absolutely right I look at everything and every interaction you have with the Batman and stuff from his point of view like you're the bad guy you should be stopped you're a fucking lunatic you need to be put away but whether it's the writing or Jacqueline Phoenix who is fucking phenomenal in this film he is he is amazing and for me I'm sorry I'm just gonna say it briefly he beats Heath Ledger. He absolutely beats Heath Ledger. Not staying away from Heath Ledger's performance because that was phenomenal. But I do also have a superhero Wednesday going up this Wednesday on them two comparing the two. So definitely come back to that. But he wins. But whether it's the writing or him, or maybe a combination of the two, they do such a fucking fantastic and amazing job. Oh my God, such a fucking good job at making you feel sorry for and so kind of not root for but, but somewhat get behind and sympathize with and and you feel him because he is aware and you're made aware that everything he's going through is, is is a massive mental illness you see there's loads of clues to it you you see how he is he's also got he's got a, a tick which when certain scenarios arise he can't help but laugh it's not like ah oh, that's funny he's 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 trying to show and he's trying to warn people listen i'm not i'm not trying to laugh at you it's it's a condition it's like a tick i've got Fucking hell, I just, I, I really rooted for the guy at times. This is about my psyche. I'm telling you, I rooted for the Joker. It's just, just think about that for a split sec. Just, oh my God, right, okay. They do it in a way that there is an ideal world for each person. So I've got my own version. Uh, somebody watching this has got theirs. Fucking whoever else has got theirs. And you're following what the Joker sort of, 
where where he feels more comfortable and and more relaxed in and more uh, at home and in his sort of little ideal world and you can see he's a bit unsure in some situations and he's he's not quite 100% what's going on and every little thing sort of little minor uh, reaction a person has or a, a gesture towards him he sort of reacts to and he's 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 sort of really feeling it and and, and uh, digesting it and you, you get a sense of what he thinks the world should look like from his point of view and it's uh, the way he kind of wants to it is bad but ultimately, he wants to make everybody giggle and have a laugh. But it's just going about it in the wrong kind of way. Fuck, it really opened my eyes to the Joker. And that's a character I claimed I knew so well. Get, fair enough, this is a different version, adaptation of the Joker. This isn't exactly the same. In fact, it's quite far off from some other adaptations uh, about the Jokers, which is one of the questions I will bring up in, in the Wednesday video. It's not who played the best Joker, who played the, their version of the Joker the best. Which version do I prefer? Uh, that's the question for Wednesday. Weird, weird way. This is an origin story as well. This is an origin story. And you see... Oh, my fucking God, visuals. Oh, my God. You see the snap. You see... Not the Thanos snap. You see the, the, the twist. The second it goes from... Arthur Fleck to the Joker. You see that happen in an instant because, right, I, 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 this is something else I broke down from the film. Um, Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne, they, they claim to be two different people. Bruce, you know, obviously there's Batman, there's Bruce. We hear it in uh, the the, uh, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight is whichever, uh, you know, know your limits, Master Wayne. Uh, Batman has no limits. So Bruce Wayne separate the two. Um, what keeps Bruce Wayne away from being the Bat uh, all times and stuff is is a business suit is the 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 billionaire the the entrepreneur sort of you know business gimmick take all that away boom he's straight into batman with this with the joker half is held back by doctors and diagnosis and pills and tablets strip them straight away uh, and get them away from him and he is there then therefore his true self being the Joker, he is what he should have always been, what he's destined to be, what he what what he is. So with the Batman, take away the fancy, the suits, the money and everything, boom, he's straight to being Batman, what he is destined to be. And the same with it, it was it felt like I was just watching the the Batman, like like Bruce putting the mask on and Arthur putting the makeup on. It's it's identical, but it's so different. Does that make sense? Oh my, this, is, this one might be a minor spoiler. I'm sorry, this one is a minor spoiler, but I have to say it because Jesus fucking Christ, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's Towards the end, really, really far in towards the end, we're getting to the, towards the end of the third act. And, um, oh my God, Joker. Right, this is a big spoiler. I'm sorry, just skip a couple of, a minute or so, whatever, if you don't want to hear this. Uh, the Joker's, uh, he's talking to a doctor and he's giggling away and the doctor says, uh, what are you laughing at? Uh, uh, what, what do you find so funny? And then we cut to the alleyway, the alleyway. Bruce Wayne standing up over um, both his parents dead. Ah, oh, I dropped that. I was getting into my moment there. Fuck. Um, and, he's, and then it comes back to the Joker and he says, um, you wouldn't get it. And it's like, did, did you just visualize what was going to happen to Bruce's future. And you'll, you'll see why. It's, it was just a really weird twist. It was like... And and just before that, we've had a crazy ass scene where the Joker is officially born at the same time Bruce knows... Well, not knows, but Bruce is about to take a different path in life of becoming the Bat. So the night the Bat was truly born and the night the Joker was truly born happened at the same time and you didn't get the Bat without the Joker in this film. Because obviously we all know the scene, uh, Crime Alley, Pearls off Martha Wayne, Thomas Wayne gets shot, the bat spawn. And in this, it's basically because of the Joker, not uh, inadvert inadvertently, is that the right word? Not directly. He doesn't say, right, go kill Thomas Wayne. Obviously Thomas Wayne dies, but we all know that kind of thing. That's not a spoiler. Because of acts that the Joker has done before. So it's like a chain of events. What the Joker's done... Um, and how that's all played out to the death of Thomas Wayne to therefore the birth of the Bat on the same night where Arthur truly become the Joker. It, 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 it was fucking amazing and it just absolutely fucking blew my mind seeing that, all that symbolism. We saw the pills and everything. Fuck!
Another great metaphor, uh, which I, again I took from it, I don't know if it's me just trying to sound like a smart ass, it probably is, but there's a big conversation in the film about uh, the binman being on strike and there's just rubbish all over Gotham. In other words, it, it's like Gotham's decaying and I took it as a sort of way to, to visually um, to visually, visually simulate, uh, simulate, symbolize the decaying of the mind, which is then happening to Arthur Fleck. So we saw the decaying of Gotham, and therefore we saw uh, like a, a, an outer look at the decaying of of the mind. That I drew that from all the bin because they kept going on about it, and, and they also mentioned super rats, and I was like, all right, cool. And they mentioned we should get super cats. And I was like, ah, oh, Catwoman, probably not, but I'm gonna put it there. Another, oh my god, another phenomenal de detail. Uh, towards the start of the film, uh, Arthur's dressed up in all the clown gimmick. And uh, it's where he's just been attacked again. Not spoiled, you see it in the trailer. If you look, notice carefully, he's got his flower. Obviously, Joker's known for his flower. Pff, the Joker toxin out there. Uh, and it's laying and it's just dribbling. It's just dribbling out. I don't know if that's a nice at least a egg. I don't know if that's a reference to what may happen and what may come. But it, I just noticed it and I thought that was fucking phenomenal. And again, oh my god, I don't want to get spoilers away, but... Oh, fuck. Right, this is an origin story, and the Joker, I could just stated, the Joker has his version of, of how the world should be and how he wants the world to be and, and how, how he sees it. Um, and all superhero films, they, they all end the same way. Well, the majority of them do, not including Infinity War. So usually ends a good guy on top and Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, usually ends a good guy on top. Everything's nice and peaceful and clear. The bad guys are put away. There's... Uh, uh, Chaos and anarchy has been extinguished. Order is restored. It's nice and peaceful. In this version, it's a, basically an opposite, and it's it's how the Joker would want his story to end. Not that I'm saying it's ending because we don't actually know um, uh, how he want how he would want it to end and how he what he would call his ideal world of peaceful and and stuff. Even though it's all chaos and carnage, but that's what he would deem the perfect world where um, he's going through and as soon as there's chaos and a bit of cheering he's sort of like ah, yes this is fucking awesome wicked um, so yeah I, 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 that's what I took from that shenanigans it really sympathizes him like he's on stage and he's listening to people like comedians and stuff because he keeps going around saying I'm a, I'm a stand up comedian I'm trying to be a comedian and fucking hell he does get a stand up like gig like a small spot and his, his tick just comes out and starts laughing I'm really sympathizing with him I'm like I feel so sorry for you it's just fucking horrible. But like, I'm, I know who he is and what he is and what he's capable of. And like, honest to God, honest to God visuals. Fuck a doodle dick. I think you'll notice the point and uh, the point for me where I noticed that he made his first step of being the Joker. Uh, all I'm going to say is when his, his two pals, his two blokes come to his house. That's when I felt, because he did stuff in this. He laughed at his own jokes. That is, that is typical Joker. That is extreme joker he makes really inappropriate offensive and not funny jokes again like you know the punch out basically because somebody's dead and he's laughing away and he's laughing at himself he's like that's hilarious that's typical fucking joker i don't know if i'm actually reviewing the film at this point or if i'm just ranting about all the cool shit i've seen um here's yeah you you find out a bit more of a backstory and that was one of the things i went into the film like do i need a joker backstory because if we're going back to confirm with uh, comparing with heath ledger stuff with the Heath Ledger performance and them films, it's basic. Okay, we've got the Batman films, chuck a hand, gra uh, hand grenade in, explosion, now go. Just chaos. This is, let's have a slow established world. There's no Joker. Let's have a, a nice little slow burn of who he is and why he's like this and what he's capable of and why he's doing the things he's doing and why his head is the way it is and why he reacts and does stuff the way he does. Let's not have the chaos until further on. Let's see what actually came before the chaos, whereas Heath Ledger stuff is just the chaos. Yeah, if you want if you want to sit down and just find a nice... If you want to just sit down for a couple of hours, because it's two hours and two minutes long the film. Um, if you just want to sit down, relax, enjoy a movie with fucking phenomenal performances. A lot of questions, because so much of this film you have to kind of determine, was that real? Because even when I got to the end of the film... Again, it's, a spoiler, it's not a spoiler. I've sort of questioned, right... How much of that was then real? You sort of got to ask, because there's, there's, we'll talk about it in the podcast on Tuesday, there's, there's one moment where I thought, right, maybe the whole film was there. But again, that's up to audience. Um, uh, audience, uh, you know, it, it's objective, isn't it? It's audience, whatever you take as a, a an individual viewer, your own thoughts and feelings and shit. Um, yeah. Was it, yeah. Ugh.
Getting on to fucking a little tangent thingy. Um, if you want a nice little film to chill and watch, a great, really well written, well acted story, this this will tickle your boxes. I'm gonna say now, I know I am really biased when it comes to comic book related films, because I'm just biased as fuck to the stuff I love. But this film, if I wasn't into comic books, I would still, I truly do believe I would still leave saying that was 10 out of 10 out. This for me, when I when I got out and uh, the credits started rolling, there is no post credit scene as well, visuals. Don't hang around, it's, it's fine, there's no post credit scene. Um, turn around and said to Chris and says, Chris, this is Endgame level. And they're all completely two, Endgame's all about the spectacle and the visual and the rah. And this is all about the slow, in-depth thing. Because it, the, this takes you to a weird place. It's it's shocking, it, it is gory at times, it's it's jaw-breaking, it's tense, and the way that they built the music, and especially the climax of the film and the music's rising, the tension's building, someone's really turning up the heat, you, you're really fucking feeling it. And you are watching this fragile, hollow sh shell of a man just trying to catch on to something and latch on to something to believe in and give him hope and give him direction and purpose and try and make a few laughs along the way just all in his own version you're just watching that and the slow decay of somebody's mind and their psyche and kind of they just want to be loved and laughed uh, with and uh, appreciated and adored and get attention because not so much that they haven't you'll, you'll see all of that and you really feel that vulnerability vulnerability and you, you just get on the same level as the, as a joker and you start to feel you're like because again i don't know anything about mental health i know as far as i can tell i'm somewhat uh, so i think I'm, I'm i'm okay i think probably not i am a weird immature little bastard i am a mother's boy there's probably something to say about that if you're like me and you've never had to experience uh proper mental illness on a on a face-to-face -face level this film will smash you in the face with it and you will be like fuck is that what it's like or is that at least a little glimpse of what it's like because i'm sure you'll never truly be able to see what it's like for every other person with mental illness and stuff um but it, i i literally again i said to chris i was like if fucking hell if that's what a certain kind of mental illness is like fucking hell it, it, that must be absolutely unbearable same time i think it can because a lot of people are gonna like i said go off and say oh causing this or cause violence because so I know there's going to be some moron out there that uses this film as an excuse to commit a crime. That person is just an idiot. If it's due to again to the mental illness stuff, I can't I can't say any sort of statement on it because I have no experience and no knowledge and no right to really question on it. But I don't think you're going to commit any sort of crime if you're sound of mind on this. It's, if you're sound of mind and do it anyway, you're just a fucking idiot. There's no reason to. Uh, but if there is truly something wrong, then I can see why people would be influenced. If, like I said, if all the the stuff was in there. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just trying to do a film review. Just, I recommend this film and I recommend it again and again and again and again and just, just keep watching until you're absolutely... Because you can just look at it from so many different angles until you're absolutely blue on the face. Uh, and I said to Chris, is, right, this is not a Batman film. But at the same time, there's always that little undertone, that always underlay it of the presence you feel of because the Wayne name said a lot and you, you actually physically see a young Bruce that... The sort of, and you, they say Gotham City a lot and they're in Gotham. You always feel that little bit of Batman. So maybe you could class it as a Batman film as well. And if you are one of the people that class it as a Batman film, this is arguably the best Batman film you've ever seen in your life. I know that might, 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 might not make any sense, especially from a rambling idiot that can't get his words out. But it was, yeah... It was fucking amazing. And oh, just wait till you get to the end. And when he says it, and he's like, you won't get it. And you see the shot of Bruce. And it's fucking oh my God, it's, it's beautiful. Massive, massive fan of storytelling. What I deem is one of the, the most important things in, in, in human history. Something we've always done is something we will always do. And that's tell stories. And this was a perfectly well-told, amazing, captivating, uh, it's ins not... I won't say inspiring, but if you want to be creative and, and make your own creative stories, you could be inspired by this film to make your own uh, very, very complicated character. Uh, it was, it was fucking, it was painstakingly beautiful. It, it really is a modern masterpiece. Yes, I think I've got all the key points I want to get out of there. Don't take my, well, yeah, take my word for it because I truly do believe everything I've said there. I really do feel about this film. Um, Unfortunately, couldn't go at the midnight release. Chris, shenanigans. Not shenanigans, but Chris had family matters, which is fine. Uh, but I went to the earliest screen and possibly, possibly could. 
<sighs> Go watch this film, straight up 10 out of 10. I rank it in the the Dan's favorite films of all time because my, my favorite film of all time to this day still is Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. 50% bias stream, 50% because that film is just fucking awesome. If you do go and watch it soon, visuals. I think I got everything out that I should have said and needed to say. Uh, I mean, review. I'm not sure how many people will watch this review because it, and how long I've gone on for rambling. A lot of other people have had the earlier press screenings like a month ago, so there's already jags of reviews up there. But if anyone is interested, that's what I thought. And uh, please, 100%, I am not the only Joker slash Batman slash comic book movie fan out there. You may 100% disagree. And just let us know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions, where you think I may have... I don't want to say read stuff wrong, because I don't think anyone can read something wrong from this film. They'll take their own unique point from it, which is another awesome thing about it don't know why i slowed down feels um yes i guess i mean and should I, I shouldn't no no i should say it fuck it I, I do have a small platform to get out there if people make it to the end of the video if you are dealing with like stuff inside your head and you and you're a bit nervous about it or a bit, or a bit unsure about it just talk to people luckily i've got people in my life so not some of the work lads i'll get ripped on for that uh, but I have got people, mates, family and that, that uh, and my dog, that I can happily talk to. Um, but yeah, don't let this film affect you in a negative way, because it, I don't think it's, it's one that's not supposed to be too in a negative way. But if you are dealing with kind of st stuff, see, I'm, I'm not the person that should be saying this, I'm a fucking idiot. But I just want to let you know, you, you can talk to people. Uh, I definitely think that that message kind of came out from the film. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll get off that now. I'm an idiot. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the review, we're Booski, we're Booski. If you did enjoy the review, you can happily, it's it's a, it's a free country. And uh, visuals, the Joker, well, sorry, Joker was fucking phenomenal. Visuals, thank you so much for watching. Always keep it here, keep it on, keep it on. <laughs>